Hello everyone, welcome to my live stream. It is Wednesday, so that means it's time for a lucky dip. Lucky dip, for anyone who doesn't know, is a drawing where I just use four randomly chosen items to complete it. So, drawing, painting, it's usually a drawing because there's usually a dry media item. It's usually mostly dry media items, but sometimes some uh, watercolor, like I've got my watercolor book because I got a watercolor item this time. Oh, Exy, hello! How are you? Zing, just boom, right in the chat. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. How are you doing? How was your day? Since it's probably the next day for you by now, where you are. Uh, so the four items that I got this time, um, so I guess I'll introduce, I won't do it in order, I'll introduce them uh, because I pointed out that I got a watercolor item. So one of them are, is this pair of Sennelier, I don't know if it's focusing on my hand or... Ah, uh, there we go. This is a pair of Sennelier French Artist Watercolor, uh, lemon yellow and titanium white. I received them at the same time from, I don't remember, some art snacks box or something. So that's why they count as one item, because I got them together. Oh, you're all right. Good. Me all right. <laughs> you how are? You're speaking in Yoda talk. <laughs> I'm good. I am a bit warm. I opened my window. I hope that it cools down a little bit. It's pretty cold outside, so it's weird that it's hot in here because I'm in the basement. I'm on the yesterday at Friday. So it's Friday. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Thursday. You're, you're speaking of riddles. <laughs> I'm on the yesterday Friday. It's Thursday for you, I see. Making me work, work my brain. The yesterday of Friday. Friday is yesterday. That's cute. Friday is yesterday. It's kind of like, I've heard that before. They use it in uh, Lord of the Rings, like sister son means like nephew and <laughs> stuff like that. Okay, so one thing is this watercolor. So I have my water, a brush, and a palette in order to use the watercolor. Also, I picked my favorite watercolor sketchbook, which I've been using quite a bit. I get a lot of water items. Another thing, I'm going to use it like watercolor this time, but it's not watercolor. It is like India ink, I think. Anyway, it's definitely black ink. Uh, Pearl Noir? Noir. I don't know. I can't. Erbing? I'm not that great with French, so you can just see it. And <laughs> it's this little bottle of black ink, the multi purpose. And I'm pretty sure I've gotten this item before. I don't remember how I used it then, but I'm to, make, to keep things simple, I'm just going to use with the brush. So use like watercolor or just do brush inking. I haven't decided yet. I'll probably do brush inking because I love inking the outside of stuff. Such a cute bottle, right? It's just so lovely. Like you just want a little collection of these, right? Like in all the colors. And it's so nice because it says for pen, brush, and pen holder. So you can use it in your fountain pen as well as typical uses, or for me, typical uses. For me, I'm like, I gotta be careful not to put in ink that shouldn't go in a, my fountain pen. Oh, it looks like my camera's a slightly bit not straight. There, fixed it. Or maybe my notebook's not straight? Now I can't tell. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> okay, is that everything? No, two more things. So here's this one. I think I have technically a different size from what I pulled. It's the Sakura Micro Perm Pen. What's different as far as I remember is that this is kind of like a Sharpie or some other permanent pen. You can write on a lot more stuff than with a regular Sakura Micron pen and so that's what's cool about it. The thing that's different is I only have the O3 and I have a memory of having the 05 and using it so much that it dried out. So I technically drew the 05 and um, 
So I'm going to check after this stream to see if I even have the 03 on my list. If I don't have it on the list, then I'll put, replace the 05 with the 03 because I don't have 05. I really like these because you can write on all kinds of like slick surfaces or um, whatever. I was using it to write on like the back of photos where it's like only certain pens would be writing. Well, this one was always reliable for that. And then the final item. It's interesting because last week I was looking at this one because I was like, is this the item I was looking for? And then what do you know? It comes up this week. It's the General's Color Text Colored Pencil in orange. So this will be interesting. It specifically says it's insoluble, which means it doesn't move around in water. So I'm wondering if I should put it down before or after the watercolor, because it could be cool to put it down before and then paint over the top and just see what happens. But I guess I'll do my little swatches first, do a little test. Um, I'll introduce this more in a second, and I got a bookmark so that I can remember what page I went on. Because this isn't a book where I'm going to do every single pose in it, because some of the pictures are pretty small. And it's hard for me to see them. But this is the pose reference book I'm going to be using. But first, let's do the swatches. There we go. Uh, although I do need to look and see. I think it's the same up and down. Oh, someone's at the door. Well, it's going to have to wait. Ray and my husband will go get it. Well, I don't know if you heard that, but Google told me someone's at the entryway doorbell. This is the pose I'm going to do this time, so I do want up and down format. So, we'll do swatches this way. Stick my sticky note on there. <laughs> I would read your message out, but it always listens to me. Sometimes I don't want it to, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> it's so handy, but also it's sometimes like amusing. It's like, why? Why did you respond at this point? But I do like, ever since we got the camera doorbell thing, it record like you can say oh remember this face so like from my siblings come over it knows who it is and reads their name and says so and so is here <laughs> so I like that because I'm like oh so and so is here my siblings especially nice when I'm like waiting for them to get here I'm like oh okay good they're here okay so first testing the colored pencil. So I wanted to sharpen it anyway. Now it might be because it's watercolor paper, but the color lay down isn't as smooth as I would prefer, but you can get a nice rich color from it if you really work it. So and probably a lot of that is the paper because this paper is designed for watercolor rather than colored pencil, so but the watercolor texture is nice under the... Here, hold it up since it's so bright it's kind of hard to see. Yeah. Watercolor texture is nice with this. Okay. And just do some lines. And this is... I'll just write color text. Since I have this reference here, I don't have to write the whole thing. Okay, and then this pen, super simple. <laughs> yeah, like usual, the smaller the pen of these types, like these um, fine liners with this type of nib, and then the smaller you go on watercolor paper, it just doesn't work that well. But you can, as long as you know that's what's going to happen. So if this decides to focus, sort of, okay, yeah, that's good. You can see how it, the line is pretty broken and rough. But as long as you know that's what's going to happen, you can just use that to your advantage and make it part of the, part of the image. That's why it's good to do a swatch, not just of the item you're using, but on the same paper that you're using. 
I don't always do it, but I am always glad when I remember to do it. Okay, so let's test the ink. I'm always a bit paranoid about uh, spilling my ink, so I'm going to hold the bottle in my hand. And look, just opening it got a little splotch on the desk. <laughs> Can I focus the camera? Oh, yes. Sorry. I did not even notice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I would have streamed for another 20 minutes without you <laughs> to let me know. There. Yeah, that's better. It's back to normal. Okay. Oh, uh, maybe I didn't need this much. Wow. Well, first I'll try some lines. Wow, it's surprisingly dry for how much it how much ink it sucked up. I thought it would be Well, this is with a dry brush, so let me get the brush wet and then dip it in the ink. Let's see if that helps. Oh yeah, that's way better. I don't think it would have come out so dry if I wasn't using watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is designed to be thirsty, so... It does get thinned out though by adding the water. But it's not bad. I like the gradient I'm seeing. I'm just gonna try doing like a whole, like a square, like an actual swatch. See what it looks like when it dries. I'm done testing this. I didn't write what it was. I used the Sakura pen to write what it was. This is the air bean. Air bean? Maybe. Oh, Sakura pen. So dry on this paper. Okay. Now I'm gonna rinse out the ink before I try the watercolor. Okay. I've got my paper towels over here. I just realized that they're not on camera, so I don't want to be like doing weird stuff off camera. Everybody's like, what's going on? <laughs> okay, I'm going to do a little blop of each paint. That's the titanium white. And here's the lemon yellow. There's definitely still some ink in here, but I'm not seeing swirls of ink coming out when I tap the brush in the water. So I'm going to go ahead and test out these uh, watercolors. Um, let's see. So I guess, so it's hard to do white on white. So I'm actually gonna do the white on top of this colored pencil and see what it looks like. It has a surprisingly good coverage. I expected it to be kind of see-through, but it's covering the color pencil right up. So that's good to know. This is a use I can put this white paint to since I only have white watercolor paper. Of course, I can mix it with the yellow as well. So I guess I'll try that next. Get a little bit of white, put it in another well. Clear 
your brush out and then get a little bit of yellow and mix it with the white. Looks like mustard. Ooh, that's a nice color. Surprisingly apparent on the paper, I thought that it might It's almost like a neon color with fluorescent. Okay, there's the white mixed with yellow. Let's try just the yellow by itself. The titanium white turns this yellow more cool. It's warmer in its plain, like pure form. Cleaning out the brush. Well, rinsing it out. I clean it after the um, after the live stream when I have I bring it all to the sink <laughs> and have brush soap and stuff. Okay, so this is the Sennelier. Sennelier. Okay, so my four items. Let me see about the placement of my stuff. I think I will scoop my water over and my palette. And then scoop myself over and then there'll be a little more room for the reference book, but I don't think that I'll have room to show the actual image I'm going to work from because it's just, so it's on the opposite side. Yeah, I won't be able to show it. So that might be a little confusing for anybody who pops in later, but hopefully not too big of an issue. So quick intro again for this book. It's the, what is it? Katana Danshi. So, Swordsman, Pose Collection, Pose Shu, Pose Shu. So, it's just a bunch of useful photographs of a couple of, um, I don't know if they're actors or just models, but uh, wearing hakama and kimono. So, kendo, basically kendo uniforms and wielding swords. And then they also have these ones just in their undies so that you can see how the musculature works. Because in these kendo style, or like this one is just kimono, the one I'm gonna do today, uh, you can't really see what their muscles are doing, where the placement of the arm is, how close to the body or how things overlap or twist. So these are, these ones are especially useful because then you have the base Form, and then if you want to add whatever kind of clothing, you know, you can make it some sort of, uh, what is it called, uh, space uniform or something, like, you can put anything, you can give them a lightsaber instead of a katana or whatever. And then they also have these, so useful, how the dressing works what it looks like, the, so you can see the folds, how the clothing is overlapped, so it's, it's especially useful, I think, for manga artists. Ooh, challenge accepted. I've done that before as an assignment in school. <laughs> Actually says, how about drawing upside down? No, dude, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> this is just kidding, but that's a great idea, actually, because I'm trying to practice I decided to make these practice, so yay! Thank you for the great idea! And then you can see the picture. Because <laughs> I think it would be weird that this picture is showing, but I'm not drawing that. Yay! X always has the best ideas. I'm seriously gonna do it. Not even as like a. Not a. I'm not being uh, facetious or anything. It was an actual project in one of my drawing classes. We had a reference image and so this went even deeper we had the reference image was upside down 
but also the it was displayed on a projector and it was extremely blurry to start and you had to draw this blurry image and like draw a blurry image it was just kind of weird and then after five minutes or ten minutes or something it would get a little bit more it would become a little tiny bit more clear and this went on for like two hours and so and then finally by the end the image is upside down but you can tell what it was it was like a skull like a, a cougar skull or something but it was upside down and also started out super blurry and so yeah I've totally done it in oh <laughs> fave song laundry is done the laundry song it is Fave's song because it means the laundry is clean. I'm uh, super happy too because uh, that particular load of laundry is my uh, the towels for my pigeons' home, their cage. Call it their apartment. <laughs> so um, I've been having a hard time getting motivated to get that done. So I'm really happy that I finally got the clean towels. I finally did it. <laughs> I know that's kind of a weird thing to be happy about, but what a great idea. I'm very happy. This is a this is going to be very interesting. Well, I guess I'll use this uh, as my sketching tool to begin with. Or should I use this? I guess it doesn't really matter. I will use this. Wow, I never realized that this person's head comes off the page here. Whatever, that's fine though. Okay, so first I'm going to mark what ought to be the top and bottom of the person. And then once the head is right about here, here's where the OB belt is. Neck, ooh, this is actually pretty hard. Nice challenge. Nice challenge. And then the kimono swings around like this. See, what's useful about drawing, even if it can be frustrating if you didn't expect it as an assignment, <laughs> is that, or doing it for two hours. That was the thing for me that made that assignment hard. Is that we had to do it for two hours. Two hours. Anyway. <laughs> uh... It's useful because it helps you see things as they are, not as you expect them to be. And that's something that I had trouble with as I learned more and more about how to draw. And that I think a lot of people have trouble with because it's easy to be like, oh, a, what, like a shirt looks like this. And it just looks like a little kid drawing because all the that you remember is what you drew as a kid instead of like what does a shirt actually look like oh there's like these lines that come down like this or like toward the stomach where the shirt ends it's like lines are or like what if it's twisted and then the lines are totally different and so yeah that's why this kind of thing is useful because you sort of have to look at shapes instead of it's actually kind of a relief because you're not fighting with yourself to be like, uh, your mind is like, I know the most efficient way to draw this. There, that's good enough. But then you're like, no, that, that doesn't look at all like it. It's because the mind is being too uh, efficient. So it's like, no, you just wanted to draw this, right? You did it. But that doesn't mean that it's accurate. <laughs> that doesn't mean, it doesn't even have to be accurate, but that it's like a believable depiction or like a depiction that someone else looks at it and they know what you drew. It's still hard though. It helps you in some ways. In other ways, it's like, what? I'm getting totally lost. I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know where I'm looking. But overall, it's fun. I like, I like challenges. Not crazy challenges, but reasonable challenges. It's also kind of like a puzzle too. Okay, it comes straight out at the side. 
but the other arm it's actually going down a little bit. Okay, actually the whole body is angling down so it doesn't even start at the same point, it starts lower. Okay, so this line comes up here, the shoulder should be out here. So I think that actually the neck needs to be a little bigger. Of course, this, this is even harder than the thing I, I did in school because <laughs> in school we had an eraser. We were specifically instructed to erase as as necessary to change um, to change the drawing based on what we were now seeing with the clearer image as the image got clearer and clearer. This will be fun to turn upside down when I'm done though so we can see what I did. How it did. How does it look? That's another trick that I've heard of that artists use. I mean, I've used it before, but if you turn your picture upside down or if you look at it in a mirror or what I do a lot of times is look at it, take a picture of it with my phone and then it just makes it look different and you can notice things that you want to do differently on it that you just can't see otherwise when you're just looking at it straight on. Okay. this mouth but <laughs> okay let's see now we got a hand right in the middle I think the torso is too small yeah the proportions are all off on this but that's okay it's all practice 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 Oh, cool. Exy says, yes, marrying the image is so popular in digital art. Main, is it main or money? Anyway, main software has built-in function to mirror the image with one click. Nice. Yeah, it is extremely useful. Whether you just like look at it in the mirror or take the picture and flip it around, or if you have a sweet feature like that on your digital art program, heck yes. Another one I use that's the simplest thing is I just set the picture somewhere where I can step really far away from it, like, I don't know, all the way across the room. And the, the picture becomes like this big, and then you can really see, like, and that's good for, like, shading in things. To see if the overall shading is effective is the way that you are intending it to be. You can see like areas where it's too dark or where it's too light or maybe where like your main subject is sort of disappearing because it's too close in uh, terms of the, what is the other term I'm thinking of? Not just shading, but, I mm, can't think of it, shading, tone, anyway. If the main, if the main subject doesn't stand out enough, but it depends on what you're doing, because if your main subject is supposed to be like hidden in a jungle, then maybe you don't want it to show up. And so then maybe you're like, oh, I actually need to add more shadows so that they're disappearing. Okay, and the sword is going into the belt. Oh yeah, this sword is way too big. <laughs> ah, but I don't have all day, so I'm just going to go with it. It's going to be really weird looking. All out of proportion. Good practice. Good practice. 
And there's a seam that goes all the way down the front of the kimono. So let's see, here's the hand. And then this is the inside of the sleeve. And then it's so dark, I can't really tell what's going on right here. So we'll just leave that. Okay, I have not worked on this at all. There's a sleeve hanging down. But it sort of folds over the hand a little bit and comes around the back of the hand. Oh, many. Oh, then I wonder if I can find it in, uh, I'm sure I can find it in Photoshop. That's the main thing I use. I use Clip Studio Paint for coloring and adding special textures and details like that, but I use Photoshop for most other stuff. Oh, I really need to sharpen this. It's getting really, really dull because I'm sketching so much with it. I want to keep an eye on the time. We're about halfway through streaming. I think that's pretty, I think that's a pretty good, I'm on a pretty good, oh, what am I trying to say? Not schedule. I'm moving along at a nice pace, pace, that's the word. I want. Sometimes I just can't think of the word I want. Yeah, I feel like overall what I have done is the body is just way too small. The head and the hands are in proportion with one another, but then the arm is way too short on both sides. The legs are way too short, and then the feet are very small. The feet are in proportion with the legs. I'm not going to worry about fixing it, though. Just noting it, and next time I will work on those more let me just swipe some of these shavings or whatever they are oh, those little black things on my page okay okay I think that's good enough for my sketch so now I've got yellow orange and a couple of black. I'm going to do basic outlining with this pen. So that'll be another item used for my challenge. Lucky dip challenge. It's nice actually, this is a pretty simple pose. I guess that means it's less easy to disguise any mistakes that I make. <laughs> But simple pose means it's faster to draw. So it's good for a live stream. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> That's very kind of you. <laughs> Looks great, though. I was just missing the hips. <laughs> yep. I feel like... Maybe I already said this, but I feel like the individual pieces some of them aren't bad but but looking at it all together <laughs> that's the whole point to me of doing practice drawings anyway ah, I see the shoulder okay I see where this should be if I draw this one again sometime anyway the the point is not to get it right the first time. The point is to practice and then see what needs changing next time to get the result that you want. 
So I'm not that worried. Even if it looks ridiculous when I'm done, it'll be fine. Because my goal will be uh, met no matter what, which is that I practiced. And also, not just practicing the pose, practicing using different tools, and also the challenge of using the different tools together and just having to make those decisions too. Oops, that finger got really thin. <laughs> The colors look cool together, the orange sitting behind the black looks pretty cool, I think. And this is why having the sketch done first is nice, because I can get these little diamond shapes on the handle of the sword. They look pretty even because with the pencil I just went cross, 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 but just now with the ink I only inked in the diamond sheet. I'm still looking at the reference image as I ink this so that I can see anything that uh, I might have left out or want to adjust as I ink. Alright, time to connect this bottom part of the sword to the top part. There's the rest of the neck. <laughs> and this is where the kimono, the neck of the kimono is wrapping around the back. There. I'm actually gonna keep a second line here because this needs to be thicker. There. Okay, so done with this one, at least for now. Might come back to it later for adding some detail or hatching or something, but... Oh! Yeah. I forgot I got started late, so I do need to hurry a little bit. A little Okay, so we've got dark, light, and sort of a middle color. Hmm. It's very hard. Uh, okay, so I think I'm gonna... Mm, mm. Okay, I have some ideas. First I'm going to... I'm gonna do... Hopefully something interesting for the kimono. I'll do it section by section. And this will hopefully use two, two items, two items with one technique. Going to wet within the lines of this one area of kimono. I'm gonna get the whole thing, the whole thing within this area damp, the whole paper. Up to the edges, if at all possible. It's kind of hard to tell. You gotta look for where the light reflects off of the paper. And I'm gonna do this little triangle right here. 
too. Okay, now I'm gonna start with the yellow and just put some yellow and it wasn't wet enough so I'm going to put some more water on top to help it spread out and some in this little triangle okay and now black ink Do a similar thing with some black. Oh, the ink is cooperating much more with my idea, <laughs> which is to plop it down on a wet surface and then it like naturally spreads out. But I'm guiding it a little bit so that it goes up to the edges and stuff. And I'm trying to keep it from being too wet as well because if it gets too wet, it will jump out of the area that I, I'm guiding it to. I want it to stay within the lines. Yeah, cool. It looks kind of like a tie-dye or something. I'll hold it up for a more close-up view in a second. Here's a close-up view of this mixing the yellow watercolor with the black ink to get a cool pattern on the kimono. So now I'll just go through and do the same thing with the rest. But I'll leave, so like this area I want to look slightly different as if it's the different, you know, it's curved around the body and so it probably won't match this one. So I'm gonna, hopefully this will dry while I'm doing the rest of the kimono and then I'll come back and do this side. So I'm gonna do this one too. And then at the same time, so like these areas like inside the sleeve where it's super dark, I can just put a lot of black ink in there and then it's like a third bird with one technique. <laughs> So beautiful. Yeah, I love, that's why I love watercolor, water-based media. It's like so satisfying to, and then you just let it naturally do its thing. Like, I didn't really do anything. I just put it on there and then it just goes, and just, it's like, it's physics basically, I think. I think that's what you'd call it. It's physics or it's the, uh, just the natural, yeah, because it's like, anyway. <laughs> I love it. I think so too. I think that water, watercolor and water media are so lovely. Okay. I'm doing the yellow first because I don't want... If you do the dark part first, then it's really hard to go back if it's not what you wanted. But if you put the yellow down and then put the black down around it, then the black won't overcome it so easily and will sit more evenly. Yay. Just remembered I don't want to knock this over. Okay. Okay, this is where I'm gonna put a lot of black because it's just dark in here anyway. Well, down here is two, even though I put yellow, so I'll put a lot of black on top of the yellow. And it's so cool how it's fingers, the black ink is like reaching fingers into the yellow and it's like a map or something. Or like ice crystals on the sidewalk. 
well, anywhere ice crystals go. <laughs> I see them on the sidewalk a lot when it's cold outside and walking my dogs, which I do almost every day, every evening, and see the ice crystals growing when it's cold. Okay, added a tiny bit more ink inside of this sleeve. I really want it to be different from the other stuff that's just like a black decoration. This is black because it's also inside of the sleeve. Okay, next part. I'll do this whole section. Hopefully it's dry enough right there where the sleeve is meeting the bottom part of the kimono. We'll see. It's looking pretty dry. for some yellow. And black ink. I did not imagine this being like this. I just had the idea and I was like, oh, awesome. I can do that. And I was thinking about what am I going to do next? Love it when a lucky dip has some really satisfying a a aspect like this. <laughs> it was just a normal lucky dip. And then I thought of a really fun thing to do. <laughs> it spread out a little bit more. Especially to serve not only as coloring but as shading. going to do this little triangle that I saved from the bottom part. And I'm at time, but there's not much left to do, so. I think here I'll make this a really bold yellow with like as if there just happens to not be any black over here. Yeah. Okay, now this collar area and there might be a little uh, bleed from the wet area uh, to the left here because it's definitely not dry but I'm trying to hurry now so Normally, I would just let it completely dry before doing another section that's right up against it. Okay, and for the collar, specifically right here because I redrew the line, I'm going to put more black. I'm just going to make the collar pretty black. Just start with the black.
so that it covers up the line that I decided that I didn't like where it was. And just tap a little bit of yellow in there too. There, doesn't seem to be a problem with the this section here. You're behaving nicely. Yay. Yes, I'll do another little close up to show. So I think the kimono is completely done with this. I mean, other than it needs to dry. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to use the ink straight out of the bottle, just with a wet, br uh, wet brush, but not wet paper, to do the sword. And then on the sword, I will use that white to give it a shiny look. So I still need to use that white paint, so that's the last bastion here for this look dip. Okay, and let's see, the, the hand, the grip is black, but the, uh, I can't remember the sword parts, like, dang it, this happened last time. I need to review my sword nomen, nomenclature? Sword terminology. <laughs> anyway, this end cap here, <laughs> what is that? Pommel, I think. And the hand guard, maybe, I think. They're not black. They are like silver or dark, dark metallic. Oh, pommel, yes, pommel. Thank you. So I'm not painting those black. I think what I'll do instead, instead of painting those black, okay, I'm done with the ink, I think. Well, the bottom part ended up a lot darker. So maybe I'll add just a tad bit more on here. Try to get it to match how dark the bottom half is. There. That looks better. Needed two layers. Okay. Carefully putting this back. Okay. So while that dries, I'm going to use this pen to just do, oh, the watercolor part is still a little wet. I got my finger without some yellow. <laughs> oh. Oh, thank you, thank you. Rain or cross guard. In Katana, that part of the guard part is named Tsuba. 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 Thank you. I've been, that's been bothering me. <laughs> Tsuba. Well then, I am giving the Tsuba some shading using this pen so that I can give it the... Uh, a metallic effect using line because it is pretty dark but it's not all the way black like everything else there nice okay 
I'm gonna do a little bit of hatching here and there while I wait for the sword, the scabbard, to dry. I remember the term. <laughs> Waiting for the scabbard to dry so I can put that paint on top. So I'm just going to look for areas that could use a little bit of hatching to indicate shadow. Oh, it didn't do his hair. Oh, that'll be a nice way to spend the time waiting for the scabbard to dry. Then I can use the white paint on the hair too. Oh, it's extremely satisfying doing the hair with the ink. It's so nice. so nice I love that then you can layer it and get even more texture like hair texture brush and cap this again now I think yes the scabbard is dry so now I'm gonna put some white on it just some little highlights So interestingly, the biggest highlight on this part is actually coming from this side, even though the biggest highlight on this part is coming from the opposite side. Dang it, I got more yellow. I guess this still isn't quite dry right there. <laughs> A little bit wobbly it's hard to get a nice sharp line on the watercolor paper and I'm actually going to use this for a little bit of masking right here because I went out of the lines with the ink so I'm just going to do a little bit of covered up some it's not perfect, but so the overall effect is a straight line instead of a bit boop. Okay, and then put a little bit on the hair. There's not any intense highlights anywhere on the reference image on the hair, but 
I'll just add some just for artistic license. Use my artistic license. some in the eyes to cover up a little bit of the orange colored pencil and then make it look more like the white of an eye. Well, I think the only thing I'll do, hopefully it's dry enough. Hopefully I don't regret this. But right here on this sleeve is very bright compared to anywhere else on the kimono. So I'm just going to do, try to do a little bit of highlight on top. Oh good, it's dry enough that it seems okay. <laughs> a little bit here. And maybe add a couple of individual lines right here and here. Single lines instead of a patch. Okay, I'm gonna call it good. I've been streaming for an hour, even so I'm after my normal end time. But I'm at my normal length of time. <laughs> Plus I think this is pretty good. I used everything pretty extensively. I feel like it's a pretty even use of all of the items. So let's see what it looks like. Oh, it's fine. oh, my God. oh yeah, you can really see the proportions are off <laughs> the right side up. Yeah, his shoulders are too wide and the body is too short, but I'll hold it like this for looking at it. Since this is how I worked on it, it is totally different. It looks totally different when it's upside down. It's harder to see that it's weird looking. <laughs> oh, Exy is too nice. <laughs> Exy says it's great. That's a good practice, though. I think I'll keep doing that. I love that idea, so thank you very much for that idea so that I can get the, I can have these images showing and then also it's just a different practice for me. So here's the up close of it. Uh, there we go camera. Especially I'm really happy with the orange, the uh, yellow and black mixing together. That was really fun. And then doing the hair with the ink was very satisfying as well. So it's like it's like not bad if you just look at individual things. <laughs> it's crazy how it looks so different. It's like, looks fine. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do that for the rest of this book. Maybe for other photo books too, because I love that. Love being able to show this too. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I love the watercolors, the texture is amazing. Yes, watercolors! So nice! Or just using ink with water or anything anything with water on the nice thick this nice thick watercolor paper with this lovely texture. Like you could just buy this book just so that you can touch the paper. <laughs> Don't do anything with it. Just touch the paper. This is so nice. Okay, that is it for today. Uh, for today's stream and uh, actually thank you for sticking with me for the whole thing especially because it's now way later than usual so <laughs> I really appreciate you stuck with me to the end um, 
I'll be back on Friday for Chibi Friday and work on my Chibi Ifa dog. So hopefully I'll see you then. Thank you for watching.